Blades to be knives, machining and welding. Let's get after it. Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be shop. Pretty excited about the project we've got going on today. My son is a physics major in college and he asked for a gyroscope for Christmas. So today we're gonna make a gyroscope. We'll go take a deep dive on this design in Fusion. Thanks to Clickspring, copied a lot of his design. He's made a couple of different gyroscopes. So I sort of took his benchtop version, merged that with some of his design features from his full design he made with gimbals and everything and was powered and merged that all together. So we're gonna to try to come up with a powered version of sort of the desktop one. So that's the plan. Again, we'll go look at Fusion, take a look at exactly what this thing entailed in my design, some of the trade-offs that I made. Before that, hey, if you're new to the channel, I encourage you to get out there to check out some of the other videos on machining, welding, knife making, just everything else we've got going on here in the shop. If you like it, subscribe to the channel, drop a like, drop a comment on here, keep the YouTube algorithm happy and help other people find this channel. With that, let's go take a look at Fusion, jump into this design, and then we'll take a look at the raw materials on the bench and we'll start making some chips. Let's go. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this full design in Fusion. I'll talk you through a couple of the trade-off decisions I made as I was coming up with this design. But first, thanks again to Clickspring. I really did steal a lot of his design features from the two different gyroscopes that he has built. First one he built was a benchtop design, and that's where I got this flywheel from. His benchtop design used the pointy end of the shaft in a cone, so a cone-type bearing, and everything is contained within the ring, and you pretty much are limited with having to pull a string to start it, or he used compressed air to spin it up as well. I really wanted to be able to power this externally, so I need the shaft to extend all the way out. So you'll see when I show the cross section, I've got the tip of my shaft coming out the top. And as soon as you want to extend your shaft beyond the diameter of this ring, you do create some interesting challenges. Initially, I thought I was going to press my shaft onto the flywheel and leave a shoulder on the bearings that I was going to use down here since I'm using a full roller bearing on the top and the bottom. But as soon as I did that, as soon as I press the shaft into place, you can see there's really limited amount of movement up and down. So there isn't a good way to tip this into place and get it up in there once you have that shaft pressed on. And if you look at Clickspring's second design where he built the full gimbal, you'll notice that he's using set screws to hold that on as well. That increases the amount of brass you're gonna use now that I'm leaving a hub sticking out both sides. I maybe could have got away with a hub on one side, but I like the symmetrical, wanted to keep that looking the same top and bottom. So now I am gonna use a single sized 3 16 shaft all the way through, no steps, no anything, no pressing it in place. So that simplified that aspect of it. And originally I was going to use locking collars on the top and bottom. So I was gonna use a locking collar with set screws, but once I looked at how little space was remaining, I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and put a solid spacer in there to take up all of that space. And then the only set screws I need are the ones that hold the flywheel in place. The rest of that, the shaft can just go through. The spacers are gonna hold it lined up and I've got the threads on these bearings. So once it's in place, I can just back these threads up a little bit center it up, take up any space on the spacers, make sure it's a good snug fit in there, and then tighten up these lock nuts on the top and bottom. That's gonna hold everything in place. Let's go ahead and take a look at the cross section on this. Let me put my spacers back in there and let's get rid of lock collars. So that's what it looks like, and I think it'll make more sense. Let's just take a quick look at the full cross section of this. So if we look at the cross section, we've got this bearing cup on the top and bottom, and I don't show the bearing, but I'm just gonna use a 3 16 ID by half inch OD roller bearing. So that's what's going to go into both of these bearing cups. See that that shaft is going to go all the way through, through from the top. Set screws coming in from both sides. So there's four set screws are going to lock on that shaft from the flywheel and hold that in place. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little groove in the shaft just to make sure that even if one of those set screws comes a little bit loose, it can't just move off of there. It's very solid on that. Going to ream the hole through the brass so it should be a nice tight fit. So again, we've got our bearing cups that go thread in from the inside out. Spacers are going to fill in make sure that there is no movement up and down so they'll ride on the inner race of the bearing and we've got a lock nut to put those in place and then this balance stud and put that threaded onto the bottom onto the remaining part of that bearing cup that's coming through 
bearing cup comes all the way through. There's enough room, enough thread sticking through that to thread on the balance stud and the lock nut and everything just gets sandwiched in there. And then when we take off this top cap, remove the top cap, you can see I've got enough shaft sticking out the top there. And then we've got a little rubber piece and a starting nub. And that is what's going to hook onto a rotary tool. And that's what's going to be able to access the end of the shaft to power this whole thing up, get it spinning. With the rotary tool, you've got variable speeds of five to 25,000, no load. Not quite sure how that's going to react with a load on here, but we'll see. If the rechargeable rotary tool that I picked up on Amazon does not work, then we'll try one that plugs in if that's got a little bit more juice. Uh, and if not, we'll have to come up with another option. But for me, a rotary tool seemed like a lot easier, accessible way to do this than trying to come up with a RC brushless motor and then a speed controller and uh, you know a few other complexities involved in trying to do another way to power it up. We're going to see if that rotary tool is going to do it. This is the merging of the two designs, and then we're just going to make a nice base here, give it something to stand on, and in that base, put a cut in the side there. So we've got a groove for a string, so we can try hanging this sideways on the string, see how it reacts there as well. So that's the overall design that I came up with. I went through and I created drawings, broke this down into all my individual drawings. That's what we'll have down in the shop to go ahead and start making all these pieces. So let's go take a look at the bench. Let's go look at the raw materials and let's start making some chips. We'll see you down in the shop here in just a second. All right, so you saw the full design infusion. I've got most of that printed out, so I've got a good breakdown of each of the individual parts I'm gonna make in here. I'll make sure that before I make each component, I'll post this drawing on the screen so you'll have a good chance to get a look at that if you're trying to do something like this. But here's basically where we are. This is that rotary tool I purchased off of Amazon, Avid Power. We're gonna see if that's got enough juice to power this up when it's done. Got some drill rod for that center shaft. That's pretty much ready to go. We just have to cut some grooves in that one. Not a lot of other work. Here's the, the bearings, just some little small steel cage. Pick those up off Amazon, 3 16 ID, half inch OD. I've got my drills and taps. Got a 3 16 reamer and then picked up some brass. I've got some half inch brass. We'll use that to make the spacers. And then I've got the three quarter inch brass for the bearing cups and the lock nuts. And then for that top and bottom piece and for the starting nut, I've got some stainless steel. One inch is what I had already. I had some of this available. Could definitely start with three quarter inch should get you everything that you need. I don't think we have anything above half inch outside diameter on the stainless. So we'll be making some chips out of that. Gonna start out in the three jaw chuck with this three inch aluminum pipe. We'll get our outer ring machined and made. And then after that, I'm gonna switch over to the collet chuck. I think for pretty much everything else, get the collets in here. There's where we're starting out. Let's go head over to the lathe and get this piece of three inch pipe chucked up, get this cleaned up on the inside and the outside, and then we'll head over to the dividing head and get our two opposing holes drilled and tapped. And then we'll be back in the lathe making a whole bunch of small parts. You'll notice I don't have a three inch piece of brass here yet. I was not able to get that sourced right away. So that won't be in until Monday. So hopefully we'll be able to get all these other parts, small stuff knocked out today, and then we'll make the actual flywheel when that larger piece of brass comes in. Let's head over to the lathe, make some chips. All right, let's get this piece of aluminum in here and get our outer ring made. So I've already ground off this outer edge, make sure there's no burr, so it's gonna slide into the chuck here nicely. Wound out a little ways. All right, now this is pipe, so I don't expect it to run very true, but let's just get an idea how much we're gonna take off of this outside here, because we're trying to take the minimum amount possible. Turn that a little bit so it's... So we've got a good 20 thou run out. I just want to see how that compares. Yeah, it would appear. All right, so I'm getting the same run out at the chuck as out here. So it's not in there crooked. It's just a little bit out around. That's just how pipe is. So if I've got 20 thou difference, that's going to be potentially almost 40 thou off the diameter to get that to clean up. And let's just get a quick sense of how our inside is, see if it's any different. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see that on camera, but it's pretty much the same. Maybe even slightly less, actually, but somewhere around 20 thou run out in there as well. All right, so we're going for about three and a half inch OD, and this comes in at just, you know, 3.5 and a couple thou. So obviously we're going to be a little smaller than our drawing on the outside, and that's expected. We're just going until it cleans up. And we've got three inches and 71 on the inside. We're going for 3068, but again, those are just the actual sizes of the pipe. So we're clearly going to be a little bit larger than that inside as well. 
just trying to minimize how much we've got. And that's really one of the nice things about this project. So if you're making this, there's very few dimensions on this whole gyroscope project that are really critical. Obviously the bearing cups where those bearings are going to go into those brass pieces, that's pretty much the most critical dimension that we're going to have. And then when you're machining the flywheel, the bolt circle, that's probably the part that we want to be most accurate about to make sure that if we're keeping that flywheel as balanced as possible as we're machining it. Um, so we want to get the bolt circle accurate and then that hole through the flywheel, that's going to lock onto that 3 16th shaft. So we're going to ream that. We want that to be a pretty nice fit. Most everything else on here, you've got pretty good flexibility in the dimensions. I think we're going to be in good shape with just clean this up and we'll see where we end up for size. All right, use my Machinist Pro app on here. You can get that at cncdirt.com or you can just get that, you know, from the app store, look for Machinist Pro. I find this works really, really well. And we're going to go turning. We're doing non-ferrous 6061 aluminum with carbide. 3.5 inches our outside diameter. We can go as high as 1964 RPM, 1800 surface feet per minute. I'm going to run it at 1200 RPM. For facing, I'm going to run 7 thou per revolution for feed to face it. And then for the turning, I'm going to run 4 thou per revolution for pretty much just taking skim finish cuts off there right from the start. All right, let's get this faced off and get that outside turned down. Again, we're going back at least 560 and then we're going to part it. So I'll probably go back about 600, 625. And then when we part that off, we'll be able to turn it around and grab it on the inside with these jaws and we should be able to face off that backside. We are cleaned up. We end up with about 3.485 is where we end up on that outside diameter. We are cleaned up in there and we're going to end up with a size of all right 3.108 is where that cleaned up all right i'm just going to use this boring bar to bevel the inside and outside edge we're going to run frontwards bevel this front edge and i'm going to run in reverse and cut a 45 on there since i've got my compound set at 45. so let's get our bevels on and we'll part this off All right, and I'm just doing a, I'm touching off to where I'm just hitting that corner and then I'm coming in 25 thou to take my chamfer across to try to keep them all very consistent. Let's get that parted. We'll spin it around and finish it off. And I am gonna face off the back side, so I just need to get close here. I'm just gonna to touch off on the back, set my depth, and go 575. It should give us 15, 20 thou to part off on the back side. Slow it down to 600. All right, gives me a nice shoulder to push up against. So that should give me some good consistency as we face that off. And then we'll break those two edges the same way we did on the other side. We're going for 560. We're at 568. I'm getting close to the chuck here. I can see it pretty well too, but just make sure I'm not hitting that chuck. First of many parts. I think that looks all right. All right, let's head over to the mill. Let's get our index head on and let's get our two holes in here. We'll get those nice and centered up. 
All right, so I got the index head on the mill and I've got it roughly set up. I'm going to be able to get across the jaws at that halfway point. Uh, again, a four jaw would make it easier to go in between, but with the size of that ring, you know, if we get a center line across there, where I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna be able to get those two holes in there and miss my jaws and get those drilled and tapped. I've got 24 hole bolt circle on the back of this, so I'm just gonna do simple indexing. We're gonna do one at this point, go 12 holes around, lock it in, and that will get us our opposite point. So first off, we just need to make sure that we have this nice and centered up on here and then also get our halfway depth back. So to do that, let's get this clamped in our chuck. Again, we've got a nice flat surface to hold that against. Don't need to go crazy tight on it. It's not really gonna go anywhere. You could use an edge finder. I'm gonna use a Heimer because I know that that's nice and centered up and I'm gonna actually move that back and forth to find the high spot on that arc and that's how I'm gonna center it up this way. And then while it's in there, I can use that on the edge, find my edge, and then come over half the width of our part. So we're 562 is the width we ended up with, so 281 will get me halfway across. All right, so you wanna make sure you've got your column locked, get this lined up, and you can see that that just hangs out for a little bit of time on zero. So as soon as it gets to zero, I'm setting my DRO, I'm moving it until it just comes off of zero, and that's about 20 thou of travel. I'm gonna come into the middle of that, and that's where I'm gonna find the center of my part. I'm gonna come up on this, just stops. I'm gonna hit zero, and if I go till, just starts to move down, about 24 thou, so I'm gonna come back to the 12th thou, the halfway in between on that. So now that I've got the middle, we're gonna come off the edge. And lock that in place, and now, all right, so we've zeroed our axis there. And from there, I'm gonna come over my 281 thou, and we should be locked on center for the part. Let me get my drill chuck back in there. We'll center drill it, tap size drill it, and then we'll get our tap started in there, nice and square. All right, we've got the index head locked in there. I'm running at about 1200 RPM. Can use that for the tap drill size as well. Let's get this in there. To make sure I get this hole in here nice and square so I'm going to hold the top of my tap centered there and then just pulling on my down feed while we get this running through there. All right, let's index 12 holes halfway around and repeat all those same operations. Well, we'll get a deburring tool on there, and there is our first part knocked out and complete. All right, we should be done with that three jaw for a while, so I pulled that off. I think we're gonna do everything else with this collet chuck on here, all our different sizes. Next up is gonna be that little starting nub. We'll get some stainless in here, get that knocked out, just a good warm up in that stainless, see how it's cutting. So I'll drop a picture of that starting nub and what we're making, and let's get this in the collet, ready to go. So we're going all the way down to half inch, but one inch is what I have for material, so that's what I'm gonna be using to start with. If you've got some smaller stainless, you can definitely start a little smaller. And we're going inch and a half long overall with enough room to part that off. So just need a couple inches. And... All right, first I'm just gonna face all this off and get rid of that. And then I'm gonna get this all down to half inch diameter. Go with a little bit coarser feed and let's see what my calculator says we wanna run this one at. Stainless 303 is what I'm running for stainless today. One inch, so again, I can max out where I am here. I think I'm gonna start at about 1200, make sure I'm not burning up my tool bit here. So we'll go with the 1200 again on this and that should be good. 
Well, there's what it looks like so far. Get it faced off and get drilled back in there a little ways. And I think I'm just gonna kind of ream it with a half inch drill bit. I'm not gonna try to bore that out. But that will fit nicely in that one eighth collet. That was a fail right there. All that work, and I just went in there and tried to face off too much too fast and just sheared it right off of the other side. I think I need to maybe taper that down a little bit and not have such a sharp edge on the back side of my piece here either. We're gonna make another one of these and we're gonna design just a little bit more of a radius into that so that it's, see if we can give it a little more strength. But the bottom line is, this is a semi-fragile part. We'll try to work it accordingly here.
I think that should be a little stronger and I will definitely grab it by the half inch piece when we flip it around. I will not try to grab it by that little one eighth piece. All right, I'm just gonna use a 60 degree threading tool to put a little bevel on the end, bevel on my shoulder there. Okay, let's part it off and get this thing done. And I'm just going roughly half inch long. All right, so there's our little piece so far. The last time I grabbed it by the one eighth and that was not the smartest move. I got this half inch, let's grab it by that and finish it off from there. All right, I'm gonna drill this a little bit undersized. So we're going for 3 8 go a 30 second under. And then I'm gonna use a 3 8 end mill to flatten out the bottom of the hole and get in there the depth that I need. So I do wanna make sure that I don't go in there too far. So I'll use my depth stop here on the tail. So this is another project I made a while back, but just put this on the tail stock, gives me a nice flat spot to put my dial on so I can make accurate depth on holes. 3 8 of an inch deep from there. Two, three, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, five. All right, now I'm going to use this two flute carbide, flatten out the bottom, and get in there my full three eighths and keep it flat. Well, with that chatter and vibration, it was making my dial scoot all over the place on here. So I think we got it flattened out enough. Put a bevel on there and then let's see if we can get our little rubber piece cut for this. There it is. There's our little starting nub. All right, so next up, we're gonna make the spacers. So we're gonna start with some half inch brass. We're gonna just turn the outside down to about 7 sixteenths. Make sure that we can grab that in a collet again to face them to length. So we are gonna to try to get a pretty nice 7 16 on the outside of these. And then we're gonna drill it, ream it. I'll uh, probably drill it and ream it after I part it off to length. So for right now, I'm just gonna go a little over half inch at 7 16 part it off, pull it out, make another one, put them in a 7 16 collet, drill and ream them while we're holding onto it from there. Minimize how much waste we have on this brass. So we're gonna make these a little extra long. So again, we're going for about 550 is what I'll make them for length to start with. And then we will face them off once we get our unit all assembled. All right, so brass is not actually in my machinist calculator, but that's all right. We'll run this little piece at about 12. <laughs> All right, just did a little 10 thou skim. We're at 487, going to 437. Well, 4375, so yeah, no flex in brass. That stuff cuts pretty nice. All right, let's part one off, get the other one done, and we'll get these drilled and reamed.
gonna drill a full 30 second under and then ream these out to my final size. That is just a nice fit on there. There's two of those done. All right, next up is a couple of lock nuts. Again, I'll show you the picture of what that looks like. So we're just gonna get this nice and round, and then we'll get a knurl on it, and then we'll drill and tap and part them off. So we're making two of them. We should be able to make them both at the same time. They're only a quarter of an inch, so we won't leave much sticking out here. Basically half inch a piece by the time we part it. I forgot with this knurling tool, I can't get in close enough to use a center when I'm knurling, so we will just leave that hanging out there. All right, so I'm just gonna go back and forth a few times and get a nice knurl on there. All right, well, super grippy for sure. As it was going through there, it gets little bits of brass and it starts to all mush together. This doesn't look terrible, but it definitely, I think it could look better, but let's go ahead and get a bevel on those, get them parted off, or drilled and tapped, and we'll get them parted off.
All right, now these ones, I am not gonna turn around and face them from the other side. So we are gonna make sure we get it pretty close to the right width. Again, we're going for a quarter inch on these. And I'm gonna go feed in a little bit and then I'm gonna change my tool over, bevel both sides of that other one. And then we can finish parting it off after that. our two lock nuts. I'm going to take those over, just hold them in the vise real quick, use a deburring tool on the back side to get rid of that extra thread off of there, and those will be ready to go. All right, there's a close-up of the knurl on those parts, and it's not terrible. Let's see if I can get it better under the light here. Yeah, it definitely just looks rolled over. I got those extra little bits pressed in there, so it's not crisp but it's definitely functional and those lock nuts are gonna work out just fine. A little practice to knurl clean in brass, I guess. Haven't mastered that one yet. All right, so next up, probably the most critical part of this whole thing is the little bearing cup. To cut this bearing cup, we're gonna turn this back 800 thou, get that down to 3 8 diameter so we can cut our thread on there. We'll just clean up this outer surface. We'll get our knurl on here on the outside so that we can grip it. We'll get it parted off. We're gonna turn it around, grab it in the 3 8 collet on the outside of that thread, through drill it, and then we'll go ahead and machine in for that bearing to fit inside that cup on the backside. So again, this is probably the hardest part of the whole thing to make in my opinion with that tight tolerance to make sure the bearing fits in there nicely. We've got a thread to cut up to a big shoulder so that's going to be a bit of a challenge. So I think this will be our toughest piece. So let's get in here and start knocking it out. Twenty-four threads per inch is about 54 thou deep, so I'm gonna go in and cut a little 60 thou relief spot there. That's where I'm gonna be able to stop my thread. Gonna get it as close to that shoulder as I can. Bevel the front edge of this, then I'll get the lathe set up for cutting 24 threads per inch and we'll be ready to go. this set up for 24 threads per inch. So on my lathe, again, most lathes have a chart on the side gonna tell you where you need to be for threading. For me, that's LBS6V. Gonna be using the half nuts for 24 threads per inch. I can engage and disengage the half nuts on any spot. And for a speed, let me see what 380 RPM looks like, what that's looking like for my feed going across here.
I think that feels pretty good. So on my machinist app for thread passes, it says first one will do about 20 thou, 17 thou, and then about 10, and then sneak up for that last pass. Probably do a couple spring passes to get this done. So it should be about five, six passes to get our thread in here. So let's start with a 20 thou cut. Yeah, it's a little snug on there. Go just a little more. That's what we're looking for. Perfect, nice fit on there. Okay, get my feedback set up for our knurling and other operations here. Well, definitely oil is better than no oil. It will be grippy and it will accomplish what it needs to. All right, I think we're good there. I'm gonna part it off and I'm looking at about 275 is what I want this. All right, well, that knurl looks at least as good as the other knurls on the other parts. I think I'm gonna go ahead and knock the other one out while we've got it set up, and then we'll change our collet and turn both of them around and finish them off from the other side together. So let's go ahead and get the other one threaded into this point. looking thread on there. So let's pop a different collet in here and we'll get this drilled. And most importantly, we'll get that board out for that bearing fit. All right, now to make sure we've got good clearance on these, I don't want these to be a tight fit. We're gonna drill them 3 16 and then ream them a 64th over that. So drilling 3 16 and reaming them out 13 64 
right, now I just want to go in here a couple hundred thou deep. I'm going to go a 30 second under half an inch. So I'm doing 15, 30 seconds. I'm going to drill in here a couple hundred thou, and that will get me a good spot to start boring from. Let's see if we get this board out to a nice bearing fit. Get my depth set there. Just barely got clearance with this little bar. Okay, I tried to take pretty much nothing. I just barely skimmed the outer edge, just enough to get that drilled hole to clean up so we can get a sense of what size we are here. Yeah, that 30 second drilled a little over, so even just taking a skim out of there, we've only got about four thou left to go, so not much at all. All right, so we've got about four thou to come out of this bore. I've got it to depth there. Pick up where I left off. All right, I think I have it at about one over. Yeah, that is a little looser than I was going for. Yep, that is just a little looser than I was trying for, for sure. But it is a nice fit on there. I think I'll just pop a couple uh, center punch holes in there to make sure that that's held in there secure. And uh, let's get another one done. And let's see if we can't get a little better fit on the next one. Yep, I think I was going more for right on size and just a little push in there. So a little looser than I was trying. Should have eased up on that a little bit more. Okay, a couple pops in there with the center punch, and that is now a nice snug fit in there. Just enough room on the back that if I take a 3 16 rod and sort of mushroom the end over a little bit, I can tap those back out if we ever need to change the bearings. So happy with how that turned out, and I think our knurls are getting a little nicer looking as well. So that's looking good. Could also use some bearing glue, that uh, green Loctite to lock those bearings in there if you end up with just sort of that slip fit in, because um, you really, you know, you can't put too much pressure on these little bearings or they start to you know you can feel them clicking when they roll so it's not like you can get them too tight it's definitely a fine spot in there this one i was going i wanted it a little snugger but popping a couple center punch marks seemed to work pretty well So I just barely tickled in there. Let's see. Well, that drill drilled it a little over for sure because I am only four and a half thou away. I think I'm just gonna rub it through at about the same. I don't know that I want to thaw on those little small bearings. Well, 
all that tickled a little out of there for sure. Let's see how we are. Now I'm reading it at almost a couple of tenths over, so I think we're good for fit that in there. All right, let me go over to my little press block. All right, well, it's definitely gonna be a little bit of a tap fit in there, which is kind of what I'm going for, so. There we go, we got a couple of those bearing cups done. Let's take a look at getting this thing all assembled, what we have so far, see how we're looking. All right, let's do a little test fitting and see how we're doing coming along here. Now that lock nut's gonna hold it, so it's gonna probably be somewhere up in there. All right, so we've got room that we can open those up. It's gonna be our spacers are gonna get wedged in there. So those are sitting nicely within the bearing right on there. All right, we've got clearance on our shaft there. I will say this drill rod is very tight inside these bearings. So I am going to get my drill rod kind of roughed out and get a little emery on it and clean it up a little bit, try to get it to slide a little nicer through those bearings because it is pretty tight right now. But that is how we're looking. So let's work on a shaft a little bit real quick. Make sure we get a shaft in there functioning the way we sliding through there and working the way we like. All right, the overall length on this shaft is 4.15. I'm just gonna cut a piece here, about four and a quarter, and we can trim it down when we get it all done here. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, well here's what we're looking like. Got good free movement in there. So we've got decent alignment through our bearings, through our top to bottom. Okay, so far we're looking pretty good. Make sure my spacers are wide enough. So we're looking at yeah, 1.221, 1.222 in there. 1.375 is the total width. So my spacers are plenty long. Yeah, I'll be taking almost an eighth of an inch off of those. I mean, actually I left them 50 long. I went 60, so I left them each 50 long. So that's a hundred thou, so. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the grooves in this shaft so that that is done. All right, I just went 30 thou deep, 40 thou wide. Enough room for those set screws to bite in there. Okay, there's the middle of that groove. So I'm gonna come out, go 1.063, and repeat that same groove. 30 thou deep, 40 thou wide. And that should be the shaft done. A couple little grooves in there. Make sure those set screws lock in nice. We should be in good shape. All right, let's get our spacers knocked out so that they're where they need to be. All right, so I'm at 602. So I need to take off 90 thou. All right, 511, going for 512. I think we are right in there. Let's finish up this other one. And 511. All right, I would say we should be pretty centered up there. There's what we got so far. So we're looking nice and centered up for that flywheel to go on there. I've got enough sticking out the top. May have to face just a little bit off of that to see if that top cap goes all the way down or not. Got a nice spin, nice spacers. We should be set. All right, let's go ahead and make the top cap and then we'll make a balance stud. And then we're waiting on big piece of brass to come in.
All right, so next up, we're gonna make our top cap piece. We're gonna go 5 eighths at half inch diameter, get that pretty decent size so we can turn it around and grab it in our collet again. And then we're gonna do a quarter inch knurl on the top of that, part it off and get it out of here. Uh, looking at 7 eighths overall, make sure I've got enough room to knurl in there. Almost two inches sticking out. All right, so I am, I'm still 25 thou over, so I can use that as a good rough and get this quickly all turned down, get it down to my half inch, get our knurl on there. Okay, we're about one under half inch, so definitely be able to get that in our collet. Ready to get a good quarter inch or so of knurl on here. We'll get this drilled and tapped, part it off, turn it around. And All right, we are bit in there. We've got a nice pattern and let's get our knurl on here. All right, we'll get that drilled and tapped. All right, I'm just gonna clean up the lead edge on that knurl just a little bit, make it kind of look a little better, I think. Put a little notch in there in front of it, and then we'll park this off, clean up the backside. All right, I'm gonna add just a little dimple on the front of that. I think this can balance on a point the other way up. So I'm gonna put a little dimple so that I can make another pointy base that this can balance on. There's a nice top cap done. 
That might be the best knurl that we've gotten out so far here. I think that looks good. And then just got that little dimple there in the backside so we can balance that. All right, drawing calls for one and a quarter overall, but I'm gonna go for one and a half. Otherwise, I just can't get it tapped deep enough to fit on there decent. So I'm gonna go a little bit longer on the balance stud. Easier to tap that hole deep enough. All right, so we got our piece in here. We got it ready to go now. Turn down to half inch. I'll be able to turn that around and grab that in my collet chuck to finish off the back half. So we need to drill and tap this, and then I'm gonna go in here and cut that groove. So I just radiused a piece of high-speed steel, just kind of made a quick hand ground tool. So I'm gonna go cut that string radius in there. We'll get that done. And then once that's in there, we'll put a little bit of a knurl on here, and then we'll get this drilled and tapped, part it off, turn it around, finish that ball on the other side making progress and we're using high-speed steel now so just gonna go a nice easy 600 rpm or so and I think I'll widen that out a little bit on the bottom I think that turned out amazing. Get you a nice close up of what that radius looks like here in a little bit, but let's go ahead and get this knurled on there, and then we'll get it drilled and tapped.
All right, now I've seen with the knurling on here that clearly if I had coolant running, full coolant I think would keep that a lot cleaner for a better knurl. I'm only doing a couple of parts, but if I was doing a bunch of these, coolant full flow I think would definitely clean up those knurls a little bit. But we'll just keep using the oil for right now. Okay, we got good pattern. It locked into its pitch there. We're only knurling just a little short distance here. Let's get this parted off, get the ball on the other end of it. So we want about a quarter of an inch for our knurled section there. And then we need another good quarter of an inch to make our ball. Leave us a little extra there. There's what that's looking like so far. Let's grab this and get our nice ball turned on this end and we have another part done. All right, we'll get this faced off. We'll get it turned down to half inch and sort of clean up the backside of our knurl and then we'll work on a radius. I don't know that this will give me the exact ball that I want on the end, but it's going to get me close with a nice radius. I'll finish that off with a file, and I think that's going to get me pretty close to the ball end that I'm looking for, and that's the radius tool that I have ready to go here. I think that gets me close. Let's get a file in there, finish that off. I think that did it. There is our nice end piece. That should sit nicely in that base. I think that's gonna work well. Nice fit on there, and uh, we got plenty of thread. Heck yeah, that screw's on there. Way more than we need it to, so that is gonna be great. That's gonna lock up right where we need it to.
All right, so before I get this collet chuck out of here and put the three jaw back on for those last two parts we need to make, again, I'm just gonna sort of freehand or just design a quick little stand with a point on it, and we'll use that as a little balance stand for this as well. So I'll probably go back maybe 20 degrees from here and see what that looks like, clean up this shoulder in here, turn another little chunk, three eighths or half an inch or so down here, and then we'll part it off. I'm gonna try something. I've been looking to do a little decorative experiment here. So I'm running a really fast feed. I'm running at 47 thou per revolution. And I'm gonna go in here and take a cut and see if I can't make sort of a, a cut neural pattern on here. I'm gonna feed it across, change direction, and let it feed back at one depth. So I don't think it would line back up in the same groove. So I pretty much have to do it in one shot. I'm gonna go 30 thou deep as an experiment and we'll see what this looks like. Interesting. Didn't give as much of a back cross cut as I thought it might. I think it looks cooler than just leaving it machined. Let me redo that bevel on the front edge. We'll hit it with a little emery to clean up where it's a little sharp. Something different. Give it a try. All right, since we're using a boring bar on the back side, gonna run in reverse, feed with the compound, and let's get a pointy end on this. Okay, that's a cool enough little part. Let's get our compound set back up again. Get that parted off. Get our three jaw on here. So I'm gonna part it off there and I should have enough on that half inch nub right there to be able to grab it and call it. Face and bevel that backside. It looks pretty cool with that rough finish on the outside. Just something a little different than the knurl. I think I'll probably do that for the brass base as well. Something different. All right, we got a little pointy piece for it to balance on. Well, the brass for the base and the brass for the flywheel came in. Don't have collets big enough for those, so let's get the three jaw back on here. 
All right, I've got the three jaw on here, and actually we're gonna knock out the base really quick first, and then we'll get started on the flywheel, because once I get the one half of the flywheel done, I'm actually gonna turn it around, and with that, let's see, it's a 540,000 nub. So instead of turning it to a 540 diameter on that piece, we're gonna turn it to 547, and that way I can get it in a 3560 force collet, and I'll be able to hold that in the collet chuck to finish the back side of the flywheel. Let's get this base knocked out. This should be pretty quick. We're just gonna face it, clean up the outer edge, put that rough high speed feed rate finish on there both directions like we did on that little pointy base. And then we'll cut a little dish in there with the big radius tool. And then we'll part this off and then we'll get ourselves set up and knock out the other piece. set that back up to 47 thou per revolution and we'll go that 30 thou deep again. Maybe a little more chattery looking than it was on the stainless, but eh, still something different than the knurled finish we've got on everything else. All right, now I got a nice big radius tool to get in there and basically just dig out that dished area a little bit. So I've kind of got almost two little, like a nice radius here from the tool, and then I don't know if it's a perfect sweep into the inside, but it should definitely run nicely in there. Sort of want to stay centered up in the middle of that. So I think that's what I'm looking for. So let's get this parted and put a little bevel on there. I don't really want to grab on the outside of that to try to face off the backside. So get it parted part way, put a nice bevel on the backside, and then uh, I may just end up finishing this on some emery cloth on the back. All right, it's not a bad finish on the back of that from the parting. Rub that on some emery real quick and clean that up. And we should have our nice rounded dished base. Ready to move on to that flywheel. There we go, some quick rubs. Base is done. I think that turned out all right. We've got that same kind of rough feed finish there on the outside instead of a knurl. Just give it a little more decorative. Nice dish finish inside there. All right, time to get onto this big flywheel. Now, it does not look like they cut this very square, honestly. Looking at where it is back here in the chuck. Yeah, it's almost an eighth of an inch out of flat, so I'm guessing I've got about the same on this side. So we're gonna have a little bit to face off to get that square. Let's verify our diameter here. All right, so this ruler is pretty much exactly three quarters of an inch wide. So at three quarters of an inch wide across the center here, yeah, a full three inches would almost, almost make it in there. So we're gonna go with 2.9 and then we're gonna be beveling our edges. So we should have no trouble getting that 2.9 to fit and turn in there. And I've got it set at 2.950. All right, I'm gonna run this about 900 RPM and we'll get this faced off. Start getting turned on the outside and I'm going for yeah, 1.375 is my total width. And I'm gonna part it off. Somewhere about there should be about what I'm turning it to.
All right, well, that's plenty. I don't need it to clean up to the very, very center because we're going to get rid of that. So let me just take another little finish cut here. We'll start getting rid of our excess material. All right, so we got it faced, we got it almost cleaned up. I set my DRO, I set my readout on what I believe is pretty close to the center just to kind of mark about where we're gonna rough this out to. Now really, I need to put this mark on after I get rid of my excess material here. But I'm just gonna measure this and see how close I am to where my DRO reading is at three inches and just use my DRO to help me know where I'm coming out for these different steps. All right, so I'm actually at 2.990, so I'm about 10 thou under, three inches. So I was about 10 thou off marking my center line there. All right, I like to experiment. We're gonna try something here. I'm gonna see if I can't save a chunk of this brass since it is so expensive. So I'm gonna use my parting tool and actually, let's see, I need to be on this side. So I'm gonna move over there, 300, because I'm going for 312. And I'm just gonna part this in until I kind of bottom out my parting tool here. And then once I do that, I'm gonna put a tool on the front edge and I'm gonna see if I can cut that off and save a little chunk of this brass, maybe use it for something else later, and also just get rid of a whole lot of it in a hurry. So yeah, let's we'll see if this works out. By the time you account for the tool clearance you need on the bottom side, definitely didn't save as much of it, but still got a nice little slug if I need to make a washer or do something. Hey, better than turning it all into chips. All right, now we'll just rough out the rest of that. All right, this one should put us right at 650 if we got our DRO set right. And it's about two under, 648. Reset it at this point. There we go. All right, we're going for 597. I'm at 598. All right, so I'd say we've got that. Where we've got our DRO reading where we want it to right now. So we're within 50 thou. So we're not going to finish the diameter of that until we've dug this out a little bit. So I am going to go ahead and get in there the right depth and face across this, and then we'll mark where we need to be for our outer ring, and then we'll start digging out the middle piece.
Perfect. Right at 950 for that outside diameter. All right, our outside is done. Our DRO is set. Let's mark where we need to be there for that 2.1 ring. And no, this tool is not going to work because it's got way too much sticking down. So that's not going to cut it. Uh, what am I going to use to get in there? Almost need something more like this tool that I just was using. That may actually be what I need there. All right, let's try this little one instead. I've got lots of clearance on everything. I should be good. Got a good start on it. Let's see if we can get in there with a boring bar. Clean up a little more of that now. And good time to get the compound set to 20 degrees so we can machine that in there. I do a tool something like this, get rid of a lot of material off of the bottom of that, straighten up these sides a little bit, and I might be able to go in there in one pass, feed in, get my depth, go across, and take a finish cut off of both sides. I think that's what I'm going to need to do, because cutting out that profile in there, that's a little bit challenging. All right, I got this crazy little tool profile in there. It's super thin, super breakable, but I think I can go ahead and get that done. Let's take little light cuts and see how this does for us. Okay, we've got some tooling that's gonna get us where we need to get to. I should be nearly at depth. All right, now I should be able to get in there though with the boring bar on the backside. And yes, with the boring bar on the backside, I should be able to at least clean up to a little ways out from there. And then I'll pick it up with this one and go the other direction. Gotta get a little creative on this one. All right, so I'm gonna be running in reverse. So let me get this done. And then I'm gonna go in there and I'll just touch off with that other tool, come out until I feel like I'm touching here and just do a nice finish cut all the way out and we'll call that close enough. I do need to get this down to the right diameter first. All right, so for these, I'm gonna to touch and I'm gonna feed over 25 foul. We'll see what that looks like, but I'll try to just be a consistent feed over on these to get them bevels looking consistent here. And I went 50 on that outside there and just a little touch in there. 
Let's give this a little rub with some emery and let's get this thing parted off and then we'll turn it around. All right, time to part this off. I need to extend that parting tool a little bit to do that. Okay, so from here, I need 1.063. Really don't want to mess up this piece, so it's gonna take 1.1, and I'm gonna have to part that in a couple of widths because I'm gonna have to go full depth on my parting tool here. So take a cut, get in there a long ways, move over, take another one, come back and kind of work the middle, and I should be able to punch it the rest of the way down. And there we go. We're ready to put that into the collet chuck the other way around. Finish that baby off. Okay, we got our collet chuck back on here. 35 64 collet, and oh, that is a beautiful fit. So I'm looking for 1.063 all the way across. I should be able to face that right now. Save a little bit of that donut ring like I did on the other side. And just for grins, let's see what kind of run out we are getting since I'm not using a four jaw. So I am within half a thou on that diameter, within about a half a thou on the face. So I am comfortable with that. 1.063, I got about 30 thou to go. All right, gave it an extra 20 thou there. We'll get rid of our chunk. And there we go, once again, saved a nice big brass washer off of that. And with that little skinny tool, definitely saved a lot more material out of this one. And yeah, I got about 25 thou there. And I'm at 603, going for 547. I'm gonna have to finish that with the boring bar. Let's get this faced off to our proper width and then we'll get that marked.
Okay, 750, we are right where we wanna be there. Let me get my mark on here at 2.1 inches. All right, let me get my 50 thou bevel out here while I'm thinking about it. All right, I'll see if I can get a little better camera angle in here this time as we machine out our groove and our taper in there. Get that done and we're just ready to drill some holes in here. Tap our cross holes. Heck man, we're just about ready to run this thing. Stay tuned. All right, I think that should give us some pretty decent camera angle in there. Let's go ahead and get this cleaned out. Gonna just kind of whittle out a whole bunch of that middle section, get down close to our 300 deep, and then we'll use that boring bar on the backside again to finish off some of the face, and then we'll get our taper roughed in there. Let's just get this knocked out so it looks like the other side. And we got that all roughed out. I've got 10 thou to finish off on the backside there. And we'll get that boring bar in there and we'll clean up our corner in here, get our diameter turned on this one, finish that, and then we'll come back in there and finish our last face back in there. All right, we're gonna be spinning backwards to cut off of the backside there. Just wanted to get rid of that last bit back there. Getting in the way and interfering with this boring bar, so that should get us a little cleaner to finish this off. Okay, that seems a little cleaner back in there. Should have, yeah, we got about 23 thou left to go to get to our 547. All right, 48, so we're just about a thou where we wanted to be, we're good. Okay. 
that should be pretty close to what we've got on the other side. All right, I'm gonna knock my bevel onto this edge here. Just a little bevel in there. Run some emery in that. All right, for this one, it was 25 thou. I guess I can't forget to drill and ream it. We gotta do that too. Let's get that drilled, reamed, and over to the mill. <sighs> All right, I'm pretty much gonna bury my reamer in here to get to the one and three eighths depth that I need to get all the way through. So I'm actually gonna go, I'm an inch and a quarter to the very end of my flutes. I'm an inch and a half all the way to the shoulder where I can't ream anymore at all. So I'm going halfway in between. So I'm definitely gonna have to heck ream this a little bit. I'm gonna slow it down, put some oil in there and really try to get this as nice a size as we can. That is really a nice fit on there. That's gonna be awesome. Let's head over to the mill drill. Let's get this clamped onto the table. We're gonna dial off of this bore here, get us nice and set up, and let's get our bolt circle drilled on there. All right, that flywheel is coming together. Our plan is we're gonna set this up on a couple of one, two, three blocks. All right, we're just gonna get it close to center here to start with. All right, that should have us reasonably close. Get our dial in there. All right, well, I'm within about half a thou there. I'm using a drill chuck, but I'm just drilling holes, but I would think we've got that dialed in there pretty nice. All right, get my DRO locked in on zero there. And now I'm just gonna plug in a six hole bolt hole circle on my DRO and it'll just walk us around the coordinates we need to go get this all drilled out. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move the table every time instead of changing parts every time. So we're gonna center drill all six and then we'll drill all six and then I'll get in there and put a little chamfer on all six of them. I've got another video out there on bolt hole circles. Not gonna go through it in detail. You can either use a DRO, you can look up the coordinates. Pretty straightforward. All right, for this one, it's a 1.188 bolt hole circle. So first hole.
All right, not able to get down there with the countersink, so we will do those by hand. All right, let's get this out of here and get a vise set up. We can get our cross holes drilled and tapped in this. There it is. All right, I'm just gonna get in there with that hand beveler. Just knock the edge, a sharp edge off of those and we'll get a vise set up. We'll see you back here in a minute. All right, so I got my vise back in here. I'm trimmed back in. I'm gonna find this edge of my jaw right here so that I can line up that center boss to the edge and then I can move over to find the center of that. And I'm gonna find the back of this jaw. I plan to grab it on the three quarter inch piece so I can move out half the width of that boss, half of that 312 to find the center to drill the first hole, move over 1.63, drill this other one. So should be able to line up everything off of the corner of this vise jaw right here. All right, should be zeroed right on the corner of that jaw. All right, so that should be right on the corner. So I wanna move over half of my diameter of this, which is 547, so I wanna move over half of that. 2735. Okay, I'm gonna zero that. And then from this edge of the jaw, I wanna move back half of my 312. So that's 156. I can't get a center drill down there to start that, but I think we'll see how it's gonna do on that round surface. If I need to, I might have to get down in there with an end mill and just flatten it out and smidge, but I'm gonna see how this wants to start on there. See what it looks like. It's brass, it seems to be starting there just fine, even though it's round. So we're gonna punch this all the way through and then come over here to this other side, punch it all the way through and get them tapped. I'm just gonna give it a couple winds by hand just to make sure we get that started in there nice and square. All right, I don't think you'll be able to see the one on the front, but we're gonna come over and get that one done too. All right, the moment we've been waiting for, it is time to fit this together and see how we did. So first off, let me make sure that we've got everything opened up as wide as it'll go to make sure that we've got room. Get our shaft out of here. All right, so we're gonna get it in there. One of those, one of those. All right, let's see if our bottom spacer still fits. Yes, it is still gonna make it. Okay, so should see some grooves show up in there. Yeah, we've got grooves in both spots. All right, right now I've got quarter inch set screws. 3 16ths would be better, but I didn't have any of those at the hardware store, so I've got some of those coming, but for right now we're gonna use quarter inch. Yep, yeah, you can feel that lock in that groove we've got there. So that's just what we're looking for. May put some Loctite on these after, we'll see. This is just a good test check here. See how we're doing. All right, I do wanna go fairly snug because we're gonna spin this up, see what happens. Okay, so now just open these up a little until don't have any play or wiggle there. Lock that in place on the top and the bottom. We have nice free spin there. Good clearance on the side. And that is locked in place. That one's locked in. Get our balance stud locked on the bottom. Well, I mean, it feels awesome at the five RPM I'm getting it by hand. But even, wow, even that, you can feel that thing working. 
That is a lot of mass right there. It's spinning around. Okay. It takes a little bit of finagling. All right, that outer ring spins awfully fast. I'm not sure I like that. All right, let's try this again and see if we can't get it tamed down a little bit. Well, so far I'm not too impressed with how it turned out. <laughs> uh, let's see, I don't know what. to get the outside going. I think at this point we can safely say click spring nailed it and my design it's for whatever reason not really working all that great. I don't know maybe my physics major who wanted it maybe he'll have some ideas on how we can make it better but right now I would have to say this is kind of a fail. Kind of a fail. Seems balanced pretty nice. It sure looks cool. I don't think it's going to be functioning as a really fun toy to play with. We'll try one more thing. Let me get a piece of string. We'll try that. See if it'll hang out there on the string. Yeah, I don't think it can hold itself there. No, it's just gonna fall out of that string. Again, lots of torque there. You can feel lots of stuff going on. All right, YouTube, it's been a day. I have clearly disappointed with the performance of this yesterday. It didn't work out quite how I thought it was going to. So I got thinking about it overnight and I think I may have figured out my engineering flaw in doing this. Honestly, if this is, if this turns out to be what it is, you know, pretty much bearing 101 mistake that I made. So I did not put any kind of a relief cut on the back end of this bearing. So, so just like I have these spacers riding on the top inner race of that bearing, right now that inner race of the bearing is riding on the back side of this bearing cup, creating all that friction. So feels good when you just spin it here, it doesn't feel bad. I tried running this up with compressed air and I can't even get near the speed with compressed air that I I can get with this one and even when I crank it up with this motor I mean this thing only runs for a minute maybe not even a minute it is slowing down way too fast so I'm pretty sure I've got some heavy drag I thought maybe it was just bad bearings but I think I'm actually just running that inner race on the back side of the brass so I'm gonna pull this apart I should be able to see if I've got some rub marks in there I'll try to get a quick video of that and I'm just gonna throw these back in a collet cut some relief on the back side of those reassemble it and let's see where we end up all right, we'll see you back here in a minute and see if we found our issue. So you can clearly see I've got little rub marks on the inside of these bushings. So they're rubbing on that bearing a little bit. All right, and my bearing removal tool, like I said, I just took and just barely mushroomed over a piece of this drill rod that I'm using for the shaft. I can put that through from the backside and it just catches that inner race. All right, it's hard to see in there, but I think I can see a little bit of rub mark. Get the other one out of here. 
Well, I don't know if that's enough or not, but we're gonna go ahead and clean that up and find out if that was our culprit. All right, there it is. I got that little undercut in there now. I'm about three eighths of an inch diameter, you know, plenty big enough to go around that. And I just went 20 thou deep. So we will make sure that that inner race is not rubbing on this bearing cup. Should free that bearing up a little bit. Let's see if that stops it from wanting to spin the outer ring and just bottom line, just freeze up those bearings overall. Let's get this back together. All right, I got it back together with just not adjusted out, no play in there. I mean, it sure feels good before you spin it up fast. Let's see if we've got any notable improvement here. As soon as I put it down, lots of extra drag. I think those bearings just aren't quality enough. Ooh. Yeah, I think those bearings just have too much drag. I mean, it's already slowing down quite a bit. It hasn't been running that long. the weight of it wants to slow it down. I don't think we made significant improvement, so maybe these bearings just aren't quality enough to do it. Just too much drag in there. I'll keep playing with it. If I figure it out, I'll let you know. All right, so it still slows down way too fast, but at least if it's on something that is a little more solid to start with so it doesn't just spin out of control, it does operate like it's supposed to. So it's working at just too much drag on those bearings. Balance-wise, it seems pretty nice, but it just won't spin up long enough and I can't really get it up to super duper speed. So it should spin up way longer than that. But man, once it's going, it does run nice. All right, YouTube, I think we finally got into success with this. So I replaced these, you know, $1 bearings I got off of Amazon. I bought some good quality RC, much higher grade bearings from Boca Bearings. I'll make sure I put the link in the description. And that made the world a difference here. Also, I worked on our starter nub a little bit. Instead of that uh, black rubber that I was using, I bought some silicone tubing. that's 3 8 outside diameter and 3 16 inside diameter, and that works way better on the shaft. Um, the rubber, the black was just starting to deteriorate, get a little bit gummy and getting some rubber powder all on our pieces where this one just super easy. Just cut a new piece, shove it in there and it works great. So let's go ahead and test this thing out. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test it and I'm going to show you where it will now actually hang on our string and turn around. I'm going to do that while it's at full speed and then it still doesn't really like the brass base. That's not enough friction and it wants to let the outside spin. If you put it on on just a little bit of a rubber surface, it creates just enough drag that it spins and balances nicely. So I think I'm probably gonna bore this out and put a little piece of that silicone tubing in here as well to give it a nice spot to, to rest against. I think that'll work a little bit better to hold it. But otherwise, let me go ahead and do a demo on this and then I think we're about ready to call a wrap on this video. Nice feel and balance. Get that on there. And that thing is running some RPM. That is a lot of weight hanging off on the outside of that. Doing what it's supposed to. Super cool there. And we don't have that outside spinning like crazy. And we're definitely getting some pretty serious runtime out of this. Or get it out here a little bit on an angle. 
and get that thing moving around stays where you put it. Yeah, those bearings made all the difference in how this thing runs and functions. Now I would say I am pretty happy with how this thing came out. Significantly longer run time and enough RPM and speed to get it to do some, some cooler tricks. So like I say, it'll balance up on this one too, but that does not give it quite enough friction. And then it wants to start spinning the outer housing. But again, it'll balance up there upside down on that point as well. Just lets the outer housing spin, just doesn't give it any resistance to do that. And I think we're running out of power there now. So if it's perfectly straight, it might still run a little longer. There it is. Well, YouTube, that's a wrap on another video here in the Blades to Be shop. Hope you enjoyed it. Obviously, some good challenges as I went through and worked on this gyroscope. Prototyping is always fun, even though I copied a design from Clickspring or kind of merged together a couple of his designs. Still, I went through, drew this up, all my own dimensions, all my own parts, and had to work through a couple challenges along the way. So hopefully you hung in there with it. I will post all the drawings that I use, so all those final drawings. I'll probably post this on the Hobby Machinist forum and that'll give me a place to attach them and I'll put a link to that in the description so if you wanted to go out there and try to build this you can see the the drawing files for all those with the dimensions and everything on there I'll make those available to you and also the bearings pretty much the key to making this a success here in the end I got those bearings from Boca bearings I'll put the link to those in the description as well so you can find those if you're interested in trying to put one of these together so I think if you worked on you know Clickspring's first design and just ran this on a pointed chip I think that's a little easier to build. As soon as you want to put bearings in there, the quality of those bearings just made such a huge significant difference. But the rest of the build, I think this design, it worked out pretty well. And I'm really happy with how this rotary tool works for starting it and powering it. Compressed air is great if you're in a shop environment, but for my son, he needs something portable. So really happy with how this rotary tool worked out and using the silicone hose, the silicone tubing in there, it, rather than just the rubber stopper, definitely worked a lot better to make Make this work as well a little cleaner and really easy to to change it if that piece of silicone wears out just shove another piece of tube and make it go so overall i'm really thrilled with how this came together hopefully you like the design like the build process and again you should have everything out there if this is something you wanted to go and do on your own in your own shop or hey just like i modified the design maybe this gives you a starting point and you'll come up with your own tweaks, your own modifications to it to make it work just for you. I'm thrilled. I think my son's gonna be thrilled with this for Christmas, so appreciate you watching. Hey, if you're new to the channel, I encourage you to get out there, check out the other videos on machining, welding, knife making, just everything else going on here in the Blades to Be shop. And if you like what you see, hey, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, drop a comment, make the YouTube algorithm happy, help some others find this video, and check out some of this content as well. All right, until next time, I hope you're out in your own shop making some chips of your own. I'll be here in the Blades to Be shop working on that next project. Till then, y'all take care. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.